to the rationalmister.com's daily brief. The answer to your question is learn the goddamn process, trade your trading plans, don't take too much risk on any one trade, and just let yourself get rich. Hello everyone, welcome back to the rationalinvestor.com's daily brief. This is our public rant. Uh, I'll bark at you here for 10, 15 minutes or so. Uh, talk a little bit about what's going on in the world. And maybe if you are interested, pop on over and join us for the after party. Um, I think today... Um, might circle around just to review some of the questions that were asked in the BCS. I had to answer them fairly quickly yesterday. Um, uh, because, of course, uh, I ranted endlessly there yesterday <laughs> and ran out of time. But anyway, Liam and I had a great afternoon. So your karmic best wishes obviously paid off there. Um, and, um, uh, oh boy, welcome to the crazy. Yes, world, and I guess the the worst part about this is uh, when things are booming higher. At least we sort of uh, are not too stressed out about like hyperinflation and all that kind of talk. Um, I have a funny feeling this next uh, probably the better part of six months, at least taking us out of the summer and into the fall. It's gonna be a bit challenging, folks. So uh, strap on your seatbelts. So it should be a wild ride. Hope everybody uh, enjoyed the uh, crypto rally and uh, was able to book doubles and triples and quadruples and all those kind of fun things. I was pleased to see that the portfolios that I'm running, even though I've made a couple pretty nasty mistakes recently. And, you know, for whatever it's worth, I even acknowledge on um, social media. Uh, I don't really like the whole sort of mentor kind of label because, frankly, I'm not, I mean, I'm OK. I have a, I have a good uh, 30 plus years experience playing this game, but and I can make mistakes just as uh, just as badly as anybody else. And uh, unfortunately, I was subject to a, uh, a theft here recently on my cold storage wallet. And for the record, I will. Uh, acknowledge Chris even said this quit beating up on DeFi it's not DeFi's fault Brian it's you're just a dumbass <laughs> no nah, Chris would never say that he's a sweetheart uh, but long and short of it is is it's really a function of Brian uh, trying to do things like cold wallets and stuff and not your keys not your coins all that kind of talk and uh, it's been it's been challenging trying to teach this old dog new tricks, but anyway, we'll get through it. Um, the account, like I said, is up quite nicely. So, uh, demonstrator of best practices. I think I'm doing relatively well here, uh, and I'm not losing money. That's the most important thing in this silly uh, game. Is uh, try like the Dickens not to lose money. Uh, I always want to see that balance slowly increasing over time. Actually, um, interestingly enough, um, today uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to strap on a nice little short here in the stock market. I might have been stopped. At, oh, no, I'm still short here. So uh, really quite pretty uh, setup here on the NASDAQ. You know, pretty well defined, uh, you know, I guess, double top breakdown. A uh, huge gap to the downside, which was really interesting because first thing this morning, they brought it into the gap, but they never filled the gap. And then uh, to start the retail session, they crank the market right up, right back up into these highs. And then you can see all these wicks. Whenever I start to see a lot of wicks, oh boy, do I ever get excited for shorts. And conversely, if you start seeing a whole bunch of tails, uh, that's probably a sign that buyers are interested. So when I saw this and I saw the three bar fractal, it's such a pretty little fractal. I was actually able to get in on this short above the mountain man level um so what the hell um uh, strap that on took one off here at uh, two to one risk reward uh i'm riding the uh, free car now i did have my stop at scratch earlier but um on this breakdown and now that we have filled in the gap and actually this is an interesting commentary because uh, i think you can make the argument mr ict uh, his kind of thinking is going to kick in 
which ironically enough means that I can actually justify shorting uh, Mountain Man again, which interestingly enough would be a rally back up into here. So I decided, uh, what the hell, I might as well start locking in some profits. If they just keep making lower highs and lower lows, fine, I won't uh, do anything. But if they flip up through the top here, I'll just walk away. Um, so, you know, pretty productive day there uh, in futures land. But at the same time, too, I did uh, uh, have a crude short that I uh, tried to uh, work this morning, and that didn't work. Uh, so I had to take a loss there. So it's kind of like, um, you know, you, what you make on the swings to get back on the roundabouts. Uh, but uh, it was a pretty small loss in crude land. I don't know whether, yeah, there it is. So I, I came in and uh, basically shorted against these highs. Actually, I tried a couple times uh, and I just couldn't get anything to stick. So I had to take a, I think about a $50 loss on that trade so on balance uh net positive for the day took uh 100 100 and i guess it was about 170 or so or i guess somewhere in that neighborhood on the first contract and i might take the other you know 100 170 i guess 190 would be the number uh if this gets stopped out so on balance um you know like i said want to see a positive count moving forward uh but ironically enough i think you'd actually say i'm batting 50 50 on the day um which is interesting because this is a this is a trade of sort of the very beginning of q2 um 2024 uh and it's not starting off this uh, quarter is not starting off on a very positive note uh this is the nasdaq and i mean you look at that chart anybody looking at that chart well i mean not anybody um unfortunately a professional trader looking at this chart should be like oh boy uh, this has got trouble written all over it and i might even be well served by maybe thinking about buying a put option um <clears throat> um so and i did find it uh, you know being sort of the beginning of q2 Sort of look at the broader market. What are we sort of setting ourselves up for the quarter? <laughs> I don't mean to be rude, but wow, what a day. And if anything, what I like to do is um, sort of along the lines of that Mr. ICT kind of guy. So I actually like to uh, just watch for market structure shifts. I, I kind of like using his uh, concept here. I mean, it makes sense. Um, and the one market that actually really caught my attention right out of the gate was just an absolute train wreck. And you could argue lower highs and lower lows. This thing's been working its way lower. I, you know, last night before I went to bed with it trending down, I, I you know, I want to identify where market structure will change. And of course, that'll be a break of that high there. But which way did this market go? It puked out. I mean, it went down. So no market structure shift here whatsoever. And I was actually even uh, uh, sharing in the community um, this US dollar chart. And I got to say, man, this US dollar looks uber strong here. Um, multiple bull ABCDs working all over the place. Uh, I did this, uh, well, it looks like I just got stopped out on that NASDAQ trade. So anyway, now ironically enough, what I should do since um, since that uh, ICT uh, level guy, uh, his level was tripped up, I should actually now just go and throw my uh, order in. This is the appropriate level uh, based on Mr. ICT stuff. Um, you know, and if anything, this makes sense because you can see this was basically the market going into free fall. I mean, I suppose there's your back and forth. There was this. Uh, rally up there and notice that rally peak there and then I don't know where's the bottom somewhere like down in here right and off of this traffic area I suppose the market has to uh, start accepting back above here uh, but you know you can kind of see the market was one directional through all this so we can get a nice little counter trend rally back up into mountain man levels actually I have permission to short against that high right in there so that's kind of interesting but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, and actually, the one thing that jumped out at me this morning, 
I was quite interested in this crude. Like I said, I really liked the idea of coming in on the short side here. And, you know, this thing fought with me. Uh, the, uh, the pit opened uh, and the opening range itself on crude was just an absolutely monstrously huge range. And I didn't take the opening range trade because it's Monday. Because quite often after holiday weekends and stuff, uh, this is they, they like to set traps. I've noticed this a lot in this opening range trade. And, you know, if you have a hugely booming up market like this, I don't want to buy here. You're basically coming in and buying the top of the market. So they did that. Um, got, you know, just the knee jerk uh, opening range trader guys to go long right there. And then they just totally broke their hearts. So I wasn't really overly impressed with the uh, and and this is a good note for you, you know, uh, coming back after a holiday long weekend. Um, it is the first day of the uh, second quarter, I suppose, officially. Um, not a big surprise to see some shenanigans and stuff like, you know, just you're expecting a nice fluid move. So, you know, if I see a big jump up like this after a huge rally uh, in the market, I can't take that trade. So I passed on that today. Um, as I said there a moment ago, I actually, I even had things like bearish bots, uh, set up, uh, to justify shorts here in crude and they all got busted out. So anyway, took my shots, uh, live by the sword, died by the sword. It's just the way it goes. Um, <clears throat> but this crude oil, holy crap, is it strong in here? Wow. Look at that move. Um, and actually, interestingly enough, we're coming up to, uh, but I would consider historic uh, levels here on the crude. So, um, you know, Johnny Hoagland, I think his next uh, level is uh, up here, yeah, around 87. But here we are breaking out to new contract highs here. And, you know, the old adage, uh, show me a new high and I'll show you a big fat whore. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's not how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's a big buy signal in there it wouldn't surprise me if we have a little bit of back and forth you know the guys just simply coming in and selling against highs and stuff uh but oh boy and i've talked to you guys recently about the inflationary implications of this strong energy market and what's interesting about this is that this is i think fundamentally justified around the world so as a result and it doesn't surprise me you know, quite literally, um, the <clears throat> Ukrainians were encouraged not to go after uh, Russian um, oil facilities, Russia being a fairly large supplier of, uh, of oil to countries like China and stuff. Um, and, but, you know, I mean, I, I can empathize with the Ukrainians. I mean, the fucking uh, Vladdy Dickets, like, murdered about a half a million Ukrainians, if not more. Uh, Ukrainians have uh, returned the favor, murdering about a half a million Russians. Uh, so, I mean, it's an absolute shit show, but like all is fair in love and war. So I don't really blame the Ukrainians saying, you know, oh, the gloves are off. And they're just basically slowly dismantling the Russian oil industry, which I think is about time. I mean, fuck, they, they just, but at the same time too, Get ready in the West. Uh, you think you have high energy prices now. Uh, you ain't seen nothing yet. And then to add insult to injury, my stupid communist dictator dickhead leader in my country, don't name names or else you'll be fucking uh, thrown in jail by the secret police now in my country. I mean, it's shocking how this country is turning into like a fucking little military dictatorship here. Anyway, uh, he's going to go and crank up taxes on energy, of all things, with this price looking the way that it is. You can see A, B, C, D. Uh, there's good old Hoag's next level. You can see 2.618. So that's still another 3 or $4 higher. And, and, you know, these would be conservative levels. Of course, you've seen me talk recently. Uh, well, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but i uh, big fan of the bot trade and We've been seeing a lot of um, alt ABCDs, which actually go beyond uh, the bot. 
So we put like 1.272s and 1.618s and stuff on the chart. And you get something that looks like that. Holy Shiite Muslim. Look at that 4.669 all the way up there at $100 a barrel. And, you know, if the, if the Ukrainians are just going to slowly uh, bankrupt Vladdy and all of his oil oligarchs by just blowing up all of their uh, oil facilities and stuff. I actually heard yesterday, this surprised me, Russia is now a net importer of energy products, so things like distillates, gasoline, uh, diesel and stuff. Then, and, 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 you know, historically, of course, they were a net exporter and, you know, a lot of their puppet countries you know like belarus and stuff like that they basically were completely dependent on russian oil they the russians have actually told the belarusians uh, you're on your own good luck uh, i don't know where you're gonna get your oil but you're not gonna get it for us <laughs> it's like oh my goodness so what's gonna drive all this selling uh in the stock market and in uh, the nasdaq and the, the es and the dow and stuff like that and it's gonna make uh, life a little bit challenging for all of us here and of course that uh, definitely fuel for the fire for inflation and i think it's all about this energy market and of course we know and if you've been watching me long enough you know that we want to buy uh, our uh, unleaded and, you know, specifically um, uh, unleaded, but uh, energy products in general, buy them the middle of February. Look at that, uh, you know, that bottom there in February was an absolute gift if you took this seasonal trade. But even if we say you buy the middle of February, when are you supposed to sell this thing? Uh, May 2-4 weekend? That's way out here. So this market has a lot of seasonal room here still to go. Uh, and, of course, we all know that uh, markets absolutely love Brian's birthday, which uh, just so happened, if you're thinking about getting me a card, I'd love you for it right in there. I guess uh, my birthday is on the weekend this year, though. Eh? Um, so that's there. And I fully expect stock markets and stuff uh, to basically trough uh, through my birthday. And I suppose, uh, you know, we can circle around. We can talk a little bit about all of your favorite products. Interesting, look at that. US dollar just hit a big bull ABCD target there. But I got another one here floating out here in 2.618 up top there. Ah, interesting, look how we banged into this 4669. So maybe we'll see a little bit of, uh, blood, you know, a little, sort of calming down in the currencies market. Did I mention that the euro is just an absolute falling apart here this morning? I couldn't believe that. But anyway, just to finish off this free broadcast for all of you guys, how is, you know, and I've talked to you guys about this before, but how is a rising uh, energy, crude oil, cost, electricity, how's that going to affect crypto and Bitcoin? And I think you can see uh, whether it be the stock market or whether it be things like crypto, oh boy, they're not happy, but also too, and this is the scary thing, look how the bonds are just getting absolutely smoked here. Uh, and what's interesting about the bonds is if you actually start going out to like a higher time frame chart, like it's, you know, I'll do like a four hour chart. I mean, what letter of the alphabet do you see here? I mean, do these look like M's or do these look like W's? And this is like the short term interest rates right here. This product here should follow the Fed. Uh, does that look like an M? And these of course are prices. So if prices are ramming out, what, the, what does that mean about interest rates? They're going up. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is the one thing that's, and of course, we've talked about the commercial real estate market uh, and how uh, vulnerable that is. Uh, but I'll tell you, uh, writing's on the walls. Uh, you can see all the pieces falling into place. Uh, this might be a bit of a challenging environment for the next few months while this oil trying to figure out where the hell it wants to go. So get ready, folks. And if anything, you know, it's interesting, um, probably the one country that is most vulnerable uh, about this Russian oil shit is actually China. Because China has like no oil at all. And of course, the whole economy there is imploding. I mean, the whole fucking CCP. Got to tell you, folks, you you just got a really, really good lesson in why uh, dictators, uh, not, actually, that's not the right word, why central planning economies don't work. Uh, you have to have the economy as a market-based 
free based because central planners, of course, they're politically motivated. And once the story gets going, of course, they take it to absolute ridiculous extremes. Um, and unfortunately, I think that's exactly what happened in China. This It was all based on the fact that borrowing and the cost of borrowing was continually falling. And nobody over there told these idiot Chinese doofuses that the, the, the 40 year cycle and in interest rates, which I talked to all of you at length, this is not rocket science, but nobody bothered telling any of these CCP idiots that the policy that you put in place since 2000 was actually going to unwind and interest rates were now actually going to have to go up for the next 30, 40 years. Um, and <laughs> wow, All right. I mean, interest rates are getting punched in the nose here today. So, you know, and I, I like this kind of thinking, neither a borrower nor a lender be. I don't get affected by any of this. If anything, great on the uh, Americans uh, because they can go and like lock in long-term borrowing. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think Seward over there in Europe, he was able to get like a 20, 30 year mortgage and lock in those ridiculous low interest rates. But, oh, what a surprise in China, duh? there is no long-term mortgage. You can't really get that product. And, you know, oh boy, are these Canadians that all went and speculated on the Canadian real estate market and keep in mind that they all do these variable rate five-year mortgages because that's the way the bankster crooks have set this whole thing up. They are going to get absolutely destroyed over the next couple of years when they all have to go refinance. Because remember, the orgy was like 2020, 2021. Five-year uh, <laughs> arms are coming due. That'll happen in 25, 26, 27 and you, you can just see the writing on the walls. The, the whole damn fucking house of cards is just going to come collapsing in on itself. And, you know, they always say, uh, and actually this would be a great opportunity to interact with the uh, the audience here. And I got uh, some longtime uh, viewers who are consistent. So you tell all these uh, people, uh, what's the cure for high prices? If you know what the cure for high prices is, then you'll understand exactly what's going to happen in China. Death. That's right, Cotter. Well said. Oh, very good. Oh, you guys. Oh, you're all such awesome participants. Plus one for Omar. Plus one for Adam. Plus one for Cotter. Plus one for Constantine. Plus one for DMAC. Oh, you guys are so smart. Okay, let's finish off this broadcast with a kick boo at your crypto. Um, did hear an interesting question in the AMA, and we'll circle back around and uh, review these questions uh, in the after party here today, because there was one question that was asked here. Coinbase to add LTC, BCH, and Dogecoin to their derivatives products. Do you think this is going to have any effect on the market? And I was so impressed with this question. I actually went and pulled up charts, and frankly speaking, I think that's exactly what's driving a lot of these shit coins and altcoin market, you know, like we saw recently, uh, and it kind of left me scratching my head, that Litecoin was dramatically outperforming the big boys. The big boys were all just going sideways. And there's Litecoin just continuing to ratchet higher highs and higher lows. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Uh, I just, I couldn't understand it. But actually seeing this person's comment, it makes complete sense. And, you know, I, uh, back in uh, orange to pay days, and from what I understand, he's gaining inertia. <laughs> I have a and I even predicted that I said, get ready, Mr. Trump's gonna come back in 24, 25, and he's gonna fucking rock all our worlds again. And uh, you can't write better fiction than reality, I swear. Um, anyway, so the point is, is uh, you know, Bitcoin put in its uh, top that particular cycle right on a this the listing of Bitcoin futures contracts. Oh, what a surprise. And it's interesting that the uh, the names that uh, people were mentioning, uh, <laughs> B-Trash, I'm surprised B-Trash even still trades. Look at that, it got all the way down to a hundred bucks. Jeez, anyway. Uh, dog money, oh, boy, there's a big fat W. Get ready for dog money face rips. And of course there's Litecoin. And actually interesting, Litecoin's still underperforming. 
But I have said recently, remember I had said, geez, Litecoin sure looked like a really good buy there about, a, you know, I guess what, about three or four months ago. Completely missed that opportunity. But I was wondering why the hell were these damn things moving up as aggressively as they were? And I think we got our answer. So uh, interesting. Um, it, it will be interesting to see uh, when the actual date of these um these derivatives products are actually listed, and you guys probably know this uh, answer. Uh, but one thing I did notice, and you know, I was barking about this yesterday, uh, and I put even tweets about it. And I, oh, look at that! Oh, look how close we came to the fucking level! Oh my goodness, crazy. Anyway, um, this look. Too low here at the very least i would expect you know maybe we come back up then test the low and if this is actually a w fine great put that w in um so i'm not really in any hurry to even do anything here whatsoever as if anything is probably just more a commentary on uh, on the market and you know uh, how do you think those people that bought that um you know, master class, just go and buy Bitcoin at $70,000 and you're going to make a fortune. Oh, by the way, a uh, $5,000 bill, please pay me now. Uh, how do you think they're feeling right now? Do you think they're even, they're a little bit stressed out? Do you think they're slightly anxious? And that's the real selling feature of our education program is anybody can come up with squiggly lines. I mean, any fool can just say, oh, I think Bitcoin's going to go up. Fine, buy Bitcoin. I mean, that that's not even, I mean, Jesus, that's like, it's almost like snake oil. Um, that's not really the big selling feature of the TRI program. I mean, I think we do do enough education and research into the why we are bullish of Bitcoin, uh, you know, the whole idea of the actual monetary system collapsing in front of our faces. <laughs> so I think we put that into context, but really the selling feature of our education program is how do you handle the stress of actually managing money in the marketplace? And, you know, are there appropriate risk uh, uh, rules that one should follow? And then, you know, should you, try and figure out what type of risk taker you are. And then by actually figuring out who you are as an individual, then you can sort of categorize yourself into which type of risk taker you are. You know, this person right here who trades this setup here, they're a very, very advanced trader. I got to hand it to them. Man. They're pretty damn smart too. <laughs> arr, arr, arr. Anyway point here is that this is probably not like 90% of the people that participate in the market that couldn't handle this kind of stress. Uh, and they, you know, and you go and buy your $5,000 master classes and what are you supposed to do when you, you know, you just went you know, and inherited a brand from uh, uh, Uncle uh, um, 70 G's here, you know, a thousand bucks or so. What are you supposed to do? That's where our education program really pays off, where we, you know, we're obsessive about risk management. Um, seems YouTube is uh, having a bit of trouble here, Chris. Can you see that? Anyway, hopefully yeah, it'll be fine. I should probably wind this video up. All right, well, hang in there, buddy. If anything, Chris is trying his absolute best, and I appreciate the effort. Um, so point here is um, on an intraday basis, I mean, I thought this is an absolutely incredible setup. I couldn't believe how textbook this was. And, oh, by the way, this is the funny thing about this setup. I mean, we haven't even really gotten going here. Half of the reason why I wanted to take profits on things like the NASDAQ short that I was in there uh, just a few minutes ago was because the market had come down and uh, started to fill in price gaps. And whenever you start filling in price gaps, I mean, you know, I've talked to you guys at length and it is a huge part of our level two program. 
gaps like to be filled in. I mean, it's just an old time tested rule. So when the market came down and started filling in these gaps, I wanted to be light on my toes and just say, you know what, I'm not in love with this. I just probably want to take some profit. But the irony of it all is that if you the size of this hole on this chart here, holy crap. And the interesting thing about this, keep in mind, this is like a 30 minute chart. So, you know, we're, to all intents and purposes, we're just sitting in a, a massive trading range. And all they're doing is they're just playing ping pong back and forth. Really, I might even argue that uh, we should probably draw this off of that low. So, and notice, oh, what a big surprise. Reload comes up. And, you know, of course, Brian's favorite fib and all that kind of funny talk. You can see a, a range trader's paradise. Uh, and keep in mind, the markets like to range, you know, like 70, 80% of the time. So it's not really like this is actually out of the ordinary. This is exactly what's supposed to happen. Uh, and so the point here is that um, I am... Um, my my objective on this trade is actually for this gap to be filled in. So I'm not really in any hurry whatsoever to take this um, to me. Uh, and actually, you could even argue this is now a new M, which means that we could probably even do a big fog and bomb off of this range. And oh boy, it'll be interesting to see where 2.618 is. Boom, look at that, right at my mountain man, or uh, excuse me, Right at my BFF, my line in the sand, 78.6. <laughs> I mean, after a while, this shit gets so cliche, it's ridiculous. So I'm not really in any hurry. And I think the general message is that Bitcoin's stuck in a range. Now, has anybody been talking to you about maybe Bitcoin being in a trading range? Uh-oh, uh, now my computer's running out of memory. Uh, and how maybe the market state for Bitcoin has slightly changed here because we're heading into a massive celestial event that happens like twice a year uh, and often acts as an incredible pivot for the market. And of course, this is the beginning of Q1, uh, excuse me, the beginning of Q2, 2024. I mean, the irony of it all is that, you know, if I was a mutual fund manager and all that crap, we're supposed to be sitting here and doing nothing for the first two weeks of the quarter because we got to figure out where the hell the fund managers are actually going to put their money to work in store for us here. So, I mean, the irony of it all is I'm trying to figure out where the hell the first two weeks is, is that, you know, this is where we really want to be concentrating our efforts is uh, just understanding what the hell these fund managers, the 12th is a Friday. Where the hell is that? Uh, so right there. Uh, I won't know what these people have in store for us, fund managers, all that kind of talk, until we actually get to this point here. That's first. That's like the first two weeks of the trading quarter. And, oh, geez, <laughs> you can see this is almost turning into cliche, how cliche this is. Anyway, huge outside. I don't know whether, I don't think it was a key reversal uh oh not even an engulfing bar that would have been cool if that was an engulfing bar but just nasty red bar that's a, i'm just gonna leave it at that and you can see if we go through this low and that low there is uh what the hell is that number say 68.362 today's low 68.073 boom we've gone through that low so what that means, and of course, that's back to this conversation, uh, is the market smiling at us now? And uh, what are we supposed to think if we ever see the market smiling at us? Uh, you know the answer to that. So just be forewarned. Uh, and of course, if you haven't heard me being cautionary about this market for like the past month, and I'm wasting my time here. <laughs> I should just stop all this because nobody watches these videos. And yet my cautionary words here were spot on. Uh, this, is a, this is a very, very dangerous market. So there is the purveyor of wonderful news. Ironically enough, one of the only names that seems to be outperforming right now is Verge, our good old porno coin. 
I don't know whether they're still in the porno business, but I thought this was interesting. I uh, do a show with the Coinogy people uh, and specifically uh, Joe out of uh, Portland. Uh, if I can uh, pull him away from eating his ranch. <laughs> uh, and uh, this was one of the very first names that I told him. I said, you know, keep an eye on this. This is basically setting up. And fascinating how this little trade just keeps working away here. So there it is right now. It's pretty 3.63 to 1 risk reward if you just bought this reload zone W. Uh, and actually, I said, well, it's not really a bull div here. But um Eh, it's not a bad looking chart. Interesting. Somebody's calling. Um, so anyway, uh, other than that, I don't see anything to get excited about in crypto. It is an ugly, ugly market state out there. And I'm just going to try and talk through this silly cell phone going off. All right, there it's done. Um, and I don't think I'd be in a hurry to do a hell of a lot in this market. You know, probably Solana as a good proxy for, uh, you know, the this speculative part of the market right now. That's a nasty looking chart. Uh, it's not really actually divs, which is interesting, but still uh, very dangerous. Interesting how we banged into 2.618 and then we've just stalled here. Um, I think probably uh, the public would probably be best just to leave this stuff alone let it settle down. I mean, you can see how far down uh, reload zones are here if we just use this range now. Um, and I'm not making any predictions. I'm not in the business of making predictions. I just trade setups when stuff comes in that basically, statistically, we've seen over the years that if this happens, then that usually happens. Uh, what I would just simply say is, you know, there is reload zones. I've barked at you guys long enough about reload zones. So I hope you can appreciate the amount of risk that's in this market. Uh, and then I suppose the final thing that I'll mention is uh, I was uh, commenting, although I don't know, actually probably off this weekly chart, it'll work. Um, this is what I kind of think is our future in a weird sort of way. Uh, if we can just come down into uh, Collins Pump Chaser Zone, 38.2, first stop target, good old Ray Barbecue, uh, WD GAM, 50% rule. This would be the natural sort of that happening, post happening event dump uh, expectation window uh, would be to have uh, this 50% uh, level traded to. That's what happened in 2015 16. Um, if that's the case, then uh, just, you know, can we politely just put in a nice bottom and then set up our nice uh, seasonal summer rally window? I'd love to see that. Uh, there is a danger because keep in mind, Litecoin did it, right? If we look at uh, Litecoin, actually, I should probably stop talking. Uh, I'll carry this on in the after party looking at the, and you guys have all heard this before. But just understand that, you know, uh, and this is what I've suggested to people is, you know, here is my my birthday is right there. So I actually like the market dumping into my birthday. It almost always happens. I don't know what path this is going to take, some up, some down. But usually around my birthday, the market's not very happy. And I actually think that over that sort of following month period, we're going to slowly carve out some sort of bottom in here. So until that happens, I really just got to cool my jets. And really, I might suggest a lot of you, you know, if you are so good uh, at trading that you can do this kind of activity in the market and trade ranges, okay, great, rock it. But most of the public is not at this level of trading. So if you're just, you know, little old ladies, Joe six packs, those kind of things, I think it's in your best interest. Just fiduciary responsibility, not selling any newsletters. I'm not selling you participating in some fucking ICO or something. I'm here just working, out, you know, in your best interest. And frankly speaking, my opinion here is that the public could actually get really hurt badly here over this coming while. And of course, all the anecdotes of, please just go and buy Bitcoins. And 
take my master class for only $5,000 and I'm going to go on a whiteboard and just write Bitcoin and put a circle around it. You know, all that kind of talk, that's actually very indicative of end of bull market behavior. Uh, and what a surprise. Uh, I think a lot of them, uh, well, I don't know. Well, well, wait, it would be interesting a month or two from now to do a follow-up and see how those people did. Uh, because frankly speaking, I think, you know, they'll probably go very quiet here, but anyway, we'll see what happens. So wish me luck on my shorts. Uh, I did actually hop off on that NASDAQ trade. I think you saw, uh, that, uh, I'm, uh, I'm out of that now. Uh, I would like to see a nice counter trend rally back up in. I'll even give you a level here. Uh, I'm going to be watching 18.536 like a hawk, and that's coming back into this traffic zone. I could very easily see us come back and kiss the underside of this uh, structural fail level, and it wouldn't surprise me if that's like 78.6. So what a shock. I'm going to give you a level. I'm going to tell you the best thing for you to do right now is watch for the reload zone. <laughs> and maybe consider joining the short there. <laughs> All right. Have yourselves a great day. PMA for the win. All the best. Hugs and kisses. The only one prize is bye.